Business is a member's business debate on motion 9652 in the name of James Kelly on the Scottish Sports Association. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put with those members who wish to speak in the debate. Please press the request to speak buttons now and I call on James Kelly to open the debate. Mr Kelly, seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And it, it gives me a great pleasure to open tonight's members' debate in support of the Scottish Sports Association and retaining the crucial funding for the important role that that uh, group uh, plays. Can I thank uh, all the members who have signed up to support the motion, uh, which includes party leaders Richard Leonard, uh, Patrick Harvey, Ruth Davidson and Willie, Willie Rennie, all Labour MSPs, all Green MSPs, all Lib Dem MSPs and the vast majority of Conservative MSPs and I think that shows you the gravity with which uh, people take this uh, very important issue. Um, I, 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 have, I have to say that it does indeed, uh, it is a matter of real regret for me that I'm having to bring uh, this debate forward. Uh, the Scottish so Sports Association are well respected in the work that they do, not just in the Parliament, but clearly out in the community and the networks that they've built up through the bodies that they, they represent. And also, the, that regret is reinforced following on from the very consensual debate that we had last week to celebrate the European Championships being held in Glasgow and supporting venues throughout the country next year. You remember that in that, that debate, there was a lot of agreement around the importance of building a legacy around two, uh, two, the 2018 Games, increasing participation in sports and giving real profile to our, uh, our sports participants and the different sports that are involved in those games. It seems therefore uh, a really bizarre decision that when you've got so many aspects that you want to support in terms of these 2018 games that you will cut off uh, a major strand in terms of the organisations that will support that work. Uh, and I really have to say that I don't understand the government's decision. I think if you look at the work that the Scottish, support, the Scottish Sports Association do, there are three important strands to that work. First of all, they are an independent representative body. You look at them representing 900,000 members of sports clubs uh, throughout Scotland, 13,000 clubs in total, and that also encompasses 195,000 volunteers. Through that, they play, play an important role in representing those groups and individuals and a, a key link uh, to the Scottish Government with work with 13 uh, different departments of the Scottish Government and two new recent requests uh, for work. As I say, that is a, they, they are an independent uh, body and that representation uh, sort of demonstrates itself in the, the policy aspect uh, of the group's work. At the 2016 Scottish Parliament elections, they produced, as they did previously in 2011, uh, a manifesto support for sport, which was broadly supported um, throughout all the parties in the Parliament. There was 92% of uptake for the ideas in that manifesto. So that showed you the real breadth of policy commitment that there was there and also commitment from the political parties. The, the group uh, have strong links to the government and also to the parliament and have been very successful in influencing some of those agendas. They regularly make representations um, to the various committees of the parliament. You know, for example, over a number of budgets have made the point that it's important to retain the sports budget, not just for the successful enjoyment and participation of sports, uh, people who participate individually in sports and sports clubs, but also the knock-on effect across other uh, portfolios for which the Scottish Government uh, is responsible. So as, as we spoke about a lot last week, healthy people participating in sport will improve <coughs> the overall health uh, of the nation and that will help, uh, you know, it, 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 it will help in, ensure that we don't have to divert as many resources 
to, for example, the, the, health, the, the health budget. We've also recently been involved in advocating the increased use of uh, access in schools. And I think the, the kind of third strand that I would point out is that in terms of the work that they do in encouraging volunteers in sport, 195,000 volunteers throughout Scottish sport. If we're going to achieve the sort of things that we spoke about in terms of Glasgow next year, you need a very strong support network. And the Scottish Sports Association have been absolutely key in building that up. Uh, as I said at the start, I simply don't understand this decision. Uh, Aileen Campbell uh, is a very reasonable MSP and a reasonable minister. However, I think that this decision is completely unreasonable. Uh, when you actually look at as well at the, the amount of money that's involved here, seventy thousand uh, pounds to you know been cut off or moved into Sports Scotland. It's a very small amount of money. I can't understand the logic in terms of you know, efficiencies, even if you want to look at the case, and look at the work that the Scottish Sports Association does around pensions for some of the members groups. They've saved 105,000 in set up costs and 13,000 across 33 different groups that have been involved in that. The minister herself is well aware of this. She spoke at the 2016 AGM and the cross party group of sport and endorsed the importance of the Scottish Sports Association and the work that we're doing. So I really think there needs to be a rethink on this um, because otherwise we lose that independent voice, we lose the representation, we, we lose the quality work that the Scottish Sports Association uh, carry out, the links into the Scottish Government and also uh, to the, the committees of this Parliament. So I say very seriously to the Minister that there needs to be a rethink on this decision. It's completely the wrong decision in terms of support for sport uh, in this organisation. And it, it drains away a key leg of the, the representative, representative sports body. So the minister needs to think again, needs to talk to those who have lobbied her in support of the Scottish Sports Association, look at the case and take this off the table because it's completely the wrong decision. Thank you very much, Mr Kelly. Open debate, speeches of four minutes, Liz Smith, followed by Anna Sarwar. Ms Smith, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'm very grateful indeed to James Kelly for uh, bringing this debate to the Parliament for what he has just said. And uh, I would concur that this is a very pressing issue uh, right as we speak just now. And I want, if I may, to make my contribution this evening as one of the co-conveners of the cross-party group on sport. Alison Johnson, who I know will make a contribution uh, shortly, both of us, we have had first-hand knowledge of the role of the Scottish Sports Association, not just in terms of the very significant assistance to the secretarial work of that cross-party group, but also in promoting Scottish sport. And I know our predecessor, Margot MacDonald, would have said exactly the same thing. And so it is with very considerable dismay that we learnt about the proposed withdrawal of investment funding for the SSA by both the Scottish uh, Government and Sports Scotland, a matter which, as conveners, uh, we will discuss in detail with the Minister next week. Following the Royal Charter of 1982, which established uh, Sports Scotland, the SSA came into being. And it's been a very strong and effective voice which has helped to shape and enhance the policy and practice of Scottish sport and champion the views and contributions of its members. And I believe the SSA fulfils a unique and vital niche and as such, it provides exceptional value for money, both in terms of the governing body membership of its organisations and for the public purse through its small but highly dedicated team led so ably by Kim Atkinson. As members will be well aware, there is cross-party support across this chamber for getting the nation to be more active, both for its own sake, but also to, to achieve the policy objectives of improving the nation's physical and mental health. And it is very much the right focus. The largest delivery mechanism for sport and physical activity is through community sports clubs, coaches and volunteers, whose voice and views are uniquely and independently conveyed through the SSA. Sport should be a powerful tool in the fight against deep-rooted health inequalities and supporting community networks. In 2014, the Scottish Government published its Active Scotland Outcomes Framework, which includes, among other policy outcomes, improving our active infrastructure. 
supporting well-being and resilience in communities through physical activity and sport, and improving opportunities to participate, progress and achieve in sport. And it's difficult to see how such outcomes will be achieved by withdrawing funding to the SSA. This would also run contrary to previous statements made by the First Minister about the vital importance of the voluntary sector in helping to develop and better implement policy by working together with government. It seems inconceivable, there, or just as James Kelly has said, that the Scottish Government would not wish to have an independent representative body to help aid that collaborat collaboration, the prioritisation, and to help develop and implement policy, while also providing support to and representation for members' interests to government and national agencies. The Scottish Government has rightly outlined the importance of sport in relation to the physical and mental health and well-being of the nation. However, the threats exposed to sport, including through the recommendations of the Barclay Review in Business Rates, to ensure even greater recognition for the SSA. Without that SSA, the voice of voluntary sector sport in Scotland would, in my view, be severely diminished, perhaps even lost. There would be no independent and collective voice for the 50 Scottish governing bodies, I have to say they very regularly attend the cross-party group in great number in this parliament and there are 13,000 sports clubs and 900,000 sports club members. So as one of the co-conveners of the cross-party group on sport, I know at first hand the significant contribution the SSA has made to both the work of the Scottish Parliament and to the Scottish Government and a view that, as I mentioned before, was deeply shared by our predecessor Margaret MacDonald. At SSA receptions and exhibitions, there is always a very strong attendance, including with many people uh, who are MSPs, their staff, but also with sports professionals. So may I join in my call, uh, along with James Kelly, that there does need to be a rethink about this. Sport, after all, is about our volunteers. It is about our grassroots. We cannot have elite sport without these foundations, and that is why we need to have a rethink. Thank you. Thank you very much. Paul Anna Sarwar to be followed by Alison Johnson. Mr Sarwar, please. Deputy Speaking Officer, I am pleased to speak in support of my colleague James Kelly's motion today. Uh, last week, this chamber, uh, members spoke at length, including the Minister herself, about the positive impact of sports and physical activity on people's lives, of the potential positive impact the European Championships could have on Scotland's sports participation. But this week, James Kelly's motion and debate go to the very, go to the very heart of the behaviour of this government. Warm words one week cuts the next. This government likes to talk up all that it is doing to support and promote an active and healthy lifestyle. But when it comes to putting its mouth where its money where its mouth is, I fear it may fall short. And I hope that the minister today when she responds will pay more than lip service to the concerns that are being raised. The Scottish Sports Association is a unique organisation in that it is the only umbrella body covering sport and speaking up for the role sport and physical activity can play in addressing some of the very serious challenges we face as a country. 50 Scottish governing bodies of sport, 13,000 sports clubs, 195,000 volunteers, 900,000 sports club members. The SSA, an independent voice for every single one of them. It speaks up not just for the bigger sports, but also for the smaller sports whose voice might be lost without the support of the SSA and its aims are clear. More opportunities for sport and physical activity to grow, increased opportunities for people to participate and greater emphasis on sports development. Aims I hope everyone across this chamber can agree with. And it does this work with the support of those it represents. Almost 100% membership retention. 98% membership retention to the SSA showing how ineffective an organisation it is with high levels of satisfaction, efficiency and efficacy. Quite simply, Presiding Officer, there is no other independent voice for sport that does the work that the SSA does. That's why the Scottish Government, either directly or through its agency, Sport Scotland, should provide direct funding. And frankly, I don't know why the Scottish Government has made this decision. It feels able to fund the SCVO directly, which is the right thing to do, but not the SSA, despite the fact that sport is the largest single part of Scotland's voluntary sector. And this debate, Deputy Presiding Officer, just a week after we discussed last week the European Championships in Glasgow, which was the aim of which is to deliver increased participation in sport. Now, James Kelly, who is himself a reasonable MSP and a reasonable finance spokesperson, 
pled for the, re the reasonable MSP and Minister uh, for the Government. And I hope the Minister, when she does respond, can tell us positively how she can find what is actually a very small fund in the grand scheme of things to help deliver a sustainable future for the SSA. Uh, the Minister promised the SSA and its members at its AGM in 2016 that it would deliver on this promise. I hope this doesn't become another broken promise. The Minister said in November that the Scottish Government directs its support for Scottish governing bodies through Sports Scotland. The Scottish Government website is also clear that it will use its third sector core budget, a budget of £24.5 million, to support local and national third sector infrastructure. I am sure we can find the £70,000 needed within that £24.5 million budget to support the SSA. I think it's the right thing for the Minister to do. I think it's the right thing for the Government to do. If we are serious about tackling inequality in our country, if we're serious about the link between health and well-being, health outcomes and the pressures on our NHS, especially at a time when we see a winter pressure on our NHS, then we must directly see the link between participation, sports participation, youth clubs, the voluntary sector and also the wider NHS budget. I hope the government can see that today and that the minister makes the right decision. Thank you. I call Alison Johnson, be followed by Tavish Scott. Ms Johnson, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I draw members' attention to my register of interest. In beginning, I'd like to thank James Kelly, a long-time member of the Cross-Party Group on Sport, for bringing this motion for debate this evening. I, too, wish that we weren't having it. But as we are, let's regard this as an opportunity to highlight the excellent work of this organisation and let's make sure that no one who hears this debate is in any doubt that the Scottish Sports Association is well worth funding. I sincerely hope that our contributions this evening lead to ongoing support from the government and or its agencies for the SSA. We need the independent and passionate voice of the Scottish Sports Association in a country where physical inactivity is as great a health risk as smoking where adults who are not considered overweight or obese are in the minority, we need to ensure that this independent voice can continue to be heard. In the run-up to the Holyrood elections of 2011, I was invited to meet the Scottish Sports Association outside Parliament for a photo call, where I was given a Vote for Sport t-shirt, and I pledged, if elected, to be a Scottish sporting champion, a role that is a great honour and privilege and a role, a different sort of role than one that would be undertaken by Sports Scotland. These two organisations can work together and complement one another. They're not in competition, they're not competing, we need them both. But meeting Kim Atkinson, the Chief Executive, at dawn, it felt like it, in the car park was only a taste of things to come. This organisation gets things done. If you'd like guidance on how to truly champion sport, follow this small but mighty organisation in action. How many organisations with four staff would achieve 100% support from prospective parliamentary candidates across the five parties represented in this parliament? Its manifesto for Scottish sport, as we've heard, remains the only manifesto across Scottish sport, and it received 92% uptake of its key messages across all five party manifestos. That's an important point. You might consider that it would be inappropriate for Sports Scotland as an agency of government to have a manifesto. So here's another area where the sports association's work is essential. That liaison with parties, with parliamentarians is hugely important. The SSA are very effective in bringing sport, politics and parliament together. Learning from expert voices out with the government and the parliamentary bubble is hugely important. Now, I appreciate that the Minister will spend a great deal of time with Sports Scotland officials in her work. Well, I'm regularly updated and contacted by the Sports Association on how issues like the Barclay Review and the Water and Sewerage Review will impact on grassroots clubs in Lothian and Scotland. As you've heard, with my colleague Liz Smith, I have the privilege of co-convening the cross-party group on sport. Now, you can only imagine the strength of the contribution of our predecessor, Margot Macdonald to this particular debate. On more than one occasion, this cross-party group has had to seek a bigger venue or turn people away because a hundred or so people have registered to come along to hear the relevant, inspirational, sometimes expert, sometimes grassroots speakers who are a regular feature of the cross-party group on sport. The Standards Committee monitors groups where external attendance or 
you know, membership is low. The interest in this group is immense consistently, and that's due in no small part to the contribution of the SSA and their first-class secretarial secretariat skills. It's testament, testimony, too, to their con contacts in that wider sporting world. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government drafts a proposal regarding how public money should be spent in Scotland to deliver a wide range of outcomes. It's a huge responsibility, and it's one that we debate passionately in this chamber. I am asking the Scottish Government to continue investing in the Scottish Sports Association, in the health of the Scottish people. It adds real value to sport in Scotland. Unlike Sports Scotland, it's member-led, it's independent. It's not a weakness having two organisations advocating for sport. They're not in competition. They complement one another. Every pound spent on the work of this organisation is a pound well spent. Thank you. Thank you. I call Tavish Scott to be followed by Kezia Dugdale. Thank you, Presiding Mr. Officer. Scott, James Kelly's most reasonable point, about, amongst many reasonable points that he made, was on money. Uh, if we'd be debating £70 million, pounds, then uh, would the Chamber have been so full? If we'd been debating £7 million, pounds, would so many members from across Parliament have supported uh, his parliamentary uh, motion? We're debating £70,000. Pounds. It is inconceivable to me that government, especially given they have found extra money, £2 million pounds of extra money for the Sports Scotland budget, cannot find some way uh, to resolve uh, this uh, issue, given that strength of parliamentary support and the extremely sensible and learned and near reasonable arguments have been put by members of all parties. If the Scottish Sports Association wasn't here, we'd certainly have to invent it for the very same reasons that members have already suggested. It is independent. It cannot do and does not do the same job as Sports Scotland, which is, after all, the minister and the government's sports agency. That's why it produces a sports manifesto, as Alison Johnson rightly says. That's why it does the things across political parties on behalf of the governing bodies that makes it independent and makes it different. Uh, I, too, uh, donned that T-shirt, I think, in the 2011 election as a party leader saying uh, vote a sport, which actually in that election was a darn sight easier sell than vote Lib Dem. But the, but the important side of that is the, is the work they do across every uh, political party uh, and they do for the government. The most striking side, I thought, of the submission that Kim, At Kim Atkinson and her colleagues made uh, to members of all uh, parties in order for this debate to take place today was on the work she does for the government, on the work she does uh, seeing and helping the government to devise better policies in volunteering, better approaches uh, to the kind of initiatives that government wants to rightly take forward on obesity, on widening out sport into lifestyle choices, and into making sure that their consultations are much more meaningful uh, for the very reasons that Alison Johnson, Liz Smith, and James Kelly uh, made in their outset, in their remarks. Uh, so I think there are a number of questions the Minister, I'm sure, will want to respond to uh, in the debate this afternoon. And the first is, what is the rationale for cutting the funding? Uh, I, I do not understand what uh, the rationale, as, as opposed to just a financial we're going to cut the budget argument. If it is that, then um, I, I have every sympathy with the Minister. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she'd want to tell Parliament what that is. But if there is a genuine sport rationale or a different rationale, then, then let us hear it and let us uh, debate it. I'm sure when Liz Smith and and Alison Johnson, as the co-conveners, meet the minister in, in due course. They'll, they'll want to, to, to have that one out. The other side to it is, the, um, is if it is a non-budgetary reason behind that proposed withdrawal of funding. I think that's quite uh, serious for the simple uh, reason that all the governing bodies and all the organisations that are part of, sport, uh, of the Scottish Sports Association's membership uh, make their argument because of that independence, because of their ability to lobby government in different ways, uh, where the inevitably... Uh, uh, the pressures are considerable, particularly at this uh, time, uh, following the downturn in spending that's taken place uh, quite inevitably after the Commonwealth uh, Games. So it seems to me that's uh, a, an essential argument, an essential part of the uh, response that the Minister will want to make as to uh, why the current position is not uh, to fund the Scottish Sports Association in the way in which it's been funded in the past. What is it they've done wrong or what is it that has changed from the organisation uh, that uh, we have supported over many years and government has supported rightly over many years that is uh, no longer the case. So uh, to lose this organisation means no independent and collective voice for sports, no independent networking groups, no collective responses to consultations. Those all seem pretty strong arguments for retaining it. No connection between sport and the rest of the voluntary sector. That is an essentially important argument for this and no manifesto for Scottish sport, which would be uh, a certainly severe loss, I think, to politics and to the good government of Scotland. The government rethink would be very welcome indeed. If the minister can find a way to announce that this afternoon, she'd have my full support.
Thank you very much, Mr Scott. I call Kezia Dugdale to be followed by Fulk McGregor. Ms Dugdale, please. Thank you, President Officer. And can I, like others, uh, congratulate James Kelly on securing this debate? Although, in fairness, thus far it's not really been a debate, it's been more of a rally. And I think it's quite uh, striking that we've yet to hear from any SNP backbenchers, but there's time yet, Presiding Officer. Uh, as a matter of uh, full disclosure, can I say from the offset uh, that I've known Kim Atkinson, the Chief Executive Officer of the Scottish Sports Association, for a, a, a ridiculous 15 uh, or more years. She was the president of uh, the Sports Union at Aberdeen when myself, uh, Alex Cole Hamilton and Mark McDonald were all students there in the late 90s and early noughties. She's had a lifelong passion for advocating participation in sport and she brings that passion into her professional capacity. And I speak tonight not as her friend, but as somebody who's been consistently impressed by the professional job she does advocating for Scottish sport. And indeed, uh, I speak on behalf of the successes that the Scottish Sports Association have had over a number of years. The uh, pledge that was mentioned already that party leaders uh, signed ahead of the 2016 elections was signed by myself in a t-shirt. Uh, Alison Johnson remembers her occasion too, I'm sure, at the Astley, uh, Ainsley Centre in Edinburgh. And I will never forget that day because it's the day uh, that my uh, right hook at football nearly took out a press photographer. And you can watch that video online if you want a, a good laugh. But I took the pledge I took that day very seriously. I think we all have signed in this chamber the pledge to champion Scottish port seriously. And it's in that basis we have to do everything we can to protect the future of the Scottish Sports Association. I also speak as an MSP for the Lothians in which 25 of the 50 Scottish governing bodies for sport are based. This matters to my constituents. Last week, although I didn't take part in it, I listened to the Cabinet Secretary and the Minister for Sport uh, speak in the European Championships debate, and consistently we heard the words legacy, grassroots, participation, active kids. These are the bread and butter issues and work of the Scottish Sports Association. And if you need proof of that pudding, so to speak, you only need to look at the success they've had around opening up access to the school estate to see what they get uh, in response to their calls for action. They are members-led and an independent voice for sport, and that has to be understood. That cannot be replicated by Sport Scotland simply by the nature that Sport Scotland is a government agency. That's why the independence of the Scottish Sports Association is so important. And Pre President Officer, we've heard some of this from Tavish Scott, but here's what we'll miss if the funding disappears and the Scottish Sports Association no longer exists. There will be no independent and collective voice for sport. That means we'll see less participation and less engagement around the issues of sport in this place. There will be no independent networking groups or forums for sports governing bodies. There will be no collective responses to consultations, which means one of two things. It either means our committees will receive 50 almost identical responses from the 50 different governing bodies, or we will receive none and we won't hear the voice of sports in this place. The representative voice of sports governing bodies will be lost to key Scottish government groups and Scottish parliamentary committees. We've heard from Tavish Scott there are in the last year alone 13 different pieces of work that the Scottish Sports Association and the Scottish Government are conducting together. In fact, since the proposals to remove funding from the Scottish Sports Association have come forward, the Government has made a further two asks of their time to do work. The evidence that they make a difference is clear and it's there for everyone to see. Finally, presiding officer, I think it's clear based on James Kelly's opening remarks. If there was a vote in this parliament to remove funding from the Scottish Sports Association, the government would lose it. So they should listen very carefully to what's being said tonight. It is a relatively small amount of money that makes a tremendous difference. Please, minister, revisit and rethink these plans. Thank you. I call Phil to McGregor to be followed by Graham Simpson. Mr McGregor. Thank you, presiding officer, and thanks to James Kelly for bringing the motion to debate. Uh, I would also uh, state that I am the Parliamentary Liaison Officer to the Health uh, Portfolio. And I'd also like to uh, thank Scot Scottish Sports Association for the work that it does and the respect that it carries. And I, I think that's been mentioned by other speakers. And I agree with many aspects of the motion uh, and what James Kelly has said about, um, about people getting involved in, in health and sport and making the opportunities as available as possible. I think that's important. We've, uh, many of us here have spoken uh, many debates in the chamber about that and uh, I was, although I didn't speak last week I was uh, present here for the, the legacy of the, the Commonwealth Games and sorry the uh, 2018 championships um, so 
you know, I think that that's something that, as a parliament, that we, we all agree on. And while there's a lot in the motion to commend, as I, I've said, I'm of the understanding that the, uh, there's no Scottish Government core funding to withdraw. But in saying that, um, it is important to note, as others have said, that MSPs from, from all four other parties have signed the motion. And as other members have said, that the, the money involved is, it does, would not appear in the, the grand uh, scale of things to, to be an insurmountable uh, amount. So I, I'm sure that the, the Minister will take that on board. But I'd like to talk about the positive investment that has been made in 2017. The, the Scottish Government provided sports governing bodies with an additional £2 million to target work specifically on inequalities. Uh, in addition to that, the establishment of the 300,000 Sports Equality Fund welcomed uh, the establishment of the Women and Girls in Sport Advisory Board. I'm sure welcomed by everybody to increase female participation. And that is, that is much to be proud of. Um, I also agree with those issues around Sport Scotland uh, funding, particularly with the National Lottery being a, a crucial source of funding uh, and for other good causes as well. But, um, yeah, okay. Joanne Lamont. All of this is very interesting, but it's not relevant. I wonder if there was a vote tomorrow to withdraw funding from the Scottish Sports Association. Would you support that motion or oppose it? Uh, before, you, before you proceed, can I say I was beginning to wonder myself whether the member was straying I'm very lenient in members' debates, but straying too far from the motion, which really focuses on the Scottish Sports Association in its entirety. Well, I, I respect that, President no, officer. I'm not going to get into a debate with John Malone about um, how, how, how I'd vote in, in, if there was a vote tomorrow. There isn't a vote tomorrow. We're discussing this in a members' debate, and I've made my position. Uh, I I'm, I'm make my position on that. Um, I, I, in terms of the Sports Scotland issue, President officer, it is, it is mentioned in the. Uh, in, the, in the debate, in the motion, and I was only reflecting the fact that the, the um, income to that has been cut through the national lottery as well. And I think that is something that we do need to uh, take on board because that is something that's uh, affecting um, the, their, their ability to provide uh, full services, such as in North Lanarkshire, disability sport received national uh, lottery awards um, and the work that they do. And, and for instance, the uh, ice skate in my community um, of Coat Bridge. Uh, also, I was thinking about uh, when I was at the uh, Christon Secondary School recently and the work that they're doing there with Sports Scotland and others. Uh, you know, it's just it's going back to the point that, every, that all members have raised. Um, you know, that, that we need to get more people, particularly kids, uh, involved in sport. And as people know, I also run the, the cross-party group in football, or the future of football in Scotland, and a lot of the organisations that are involved in that uh, have, um, you know, committed to to breaking down inequalities and barriers uh, and, and we're, I've been able to uh, do presentations and you know look at the, how, how they've um, got more women uh, and girls and, and others involved in sport um, and what, one thing I would like to ask the minister as well we've talked a lot about you know uh, getting people involved in sport and making the opportunities available uh, I've been contacted by quite a few constituents concerned about the uh, the closures the possible closures at Ravenscraig of the athletics facilities and I'm wondering if the a minister will get involved in that and put pressure on uh, any old leisure to reverse any possible changes because I think the communities around about Lanarkshire are deprived enough and we don't need to lose those facilities as well. Thanks, President Officer. Uh, thank you. I call Graham Simpson, last speaker in the open debate. Mr Simpson. Um, well, thank you uh, very much indeed. Um, I wasn't going to take up uh, too much of your time, um, but I have to respond to uh, Fulton McGregor's uh, somewhat bizarre contribution uh, this evening, um, because the the the, the motion uh, from the uh, highly respected James Kelly um, is all about uh, a cut in funding to the Scottish Sports Association, and unfortunately, uh, Fulton McGregor didn't address that. He went off on a, a bizarre ramble, um, talking about uh, other funding pots, uh, and then uh, and then mentioned um, yes. Mr. McGregor. Member, I acknowledge that the motion actually says withdrawal funding for the SSA from both the government and Sports Scotland. So Sports Scotland are mentioning that. And I was talking about Sports Scotland funding. Well, what, uh, Ms. what Fulton McGregor did not say is whether he uh, supports withdrawing the funding from the Scottish Sports Association or not. I cannot quite see the point of his contribution. Um, I uh, first came across the Scottish Sports Association some years ago, um, Deputy Presiding Officer when I was a councillor in South Lanarkshire, 
Um, I was also chairman uh, of our party's um, councillors' association, and they came along um, to basically inform councillors, and I'm sure they've done it with uh, all parties, uh, about the value of sport. And we particularly got talking about the value of sport in schools and opening up school estates um, so that people could use facilities in schools for nothing. Um, and I managed to get that set as a policy in South Lanarkshire. On the back of that, it was their inspiration that got me fired up about opening up uh, school pitches across South Lanarkshire. And it's thanks to them, really, that, that we got that done. And that, that is really what they do. They're there to advocate. They're there to advocate for the, their members. They've got a lot. We've heard already uh, from James Kelly, Liz Smith, Alison Johnson, and Tavish Scott and Kezia Dugdale uh, about the 50 sports governing bodies that they represent, 13,000 sports clubs, 195 volunteers. We shouldn't forget the volunteering that goes on to deliver sport, and 900,000 sports clubs members. They have an independent voice through the Scottish Sports Association. If you take that away, they do not have that. So what is this all about? Tavish Scott asked that question. He's absolutely right. What, what have they done wrong? What is behind this? It cannot simply be money. We're only talking about 70,000 pounds. It's a drop in the ocean. What is this about? Is it about power and control? Is it about the Scottish government saying, we, we control Sports Scotland, we fund Sports Scotland? We do not want an independent voice for sport. Maybe that's what it's about. Perhaps the minister, however reasonable she may be, can address that point. This, this decision to remove 70,000 pounds of funding is inexplicable. What we will lose is that independent voice for Scottish sport. And when we want to get people into sport, we want to get people active, which we'll say we do, we need a body like this. So the minister should stand up this afternoon and tell us that she's going to remove uh, this decision uh, and reverse it. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on the minister to close the government. Uh, seven minutes there about, minister. Thank you, President Officer, and uh, thank you also uh, to James Kelly for bringing the debate uh, forward tonight. Uh, the Scottish Government has a strong relationship with the SSA and we appreciate the support it provides to Scottish sporting governing bodies. And we absolutely recognise and respect the right of those Scottish governing bodies to come together under a representative body and acknowledge the value that some SGBs and members of the SSA attach to that collective voice role played by the SSA. And in answer to previous parliamentary questions regarding the funding situation of the SSA, as I stated in my answers in this chamber, that the SSA is a membership organisation and that it is for their membership to ultimately determine how best to fund and support the SSA to effectively promote the views of the sector. My commitment uh, to sport is complete, backed with our financial intentions set out last month in the draft budget where this government committed to increase the funding for Sports Scotland by £2 million. Through this, we will continue to invest in our communities, our clubs and schools, which will include a specific focus on equalities, ensuring that our world-class system is truly for everyone. We've also pledged to underwrite any potential shortfall in national lottery funding for Sports Scotland of up to £3.4 million, which impacts on grassroots sport and the voluntary sector, which is uh, both, both elements cited within the motion presented tonight for debate. And this will help to provide certainty for the sports sector in absence of action from the UK government. And this is a serious issue and one that I'd welcome cross-parliamentary support in addressing, even if on this issue tonight, uh, opinions uh, may differ. Liz Smith. Helen Campbell for giving way. Given uh, what Alison Johnson said about the importance of having both Sports Scotland and the Scottish Sports Association, does the Minister agree that there is a role for both and that when it comes to the Sports Association, the most important thing that they represent is that independent advocate of the governing bodies? 
Minister. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I uh, said in the, in the start of my remarks, that we absolutely recognise and respect the right of governing bodies to come together under a representative body, providing that independent voice that uh, many members tonight have uh, articulated and absolutely recognise that distinct role then that uh, Sports Scotland play as an agency of, of government. So uh, there's never been any... Uh, a lack of recognition of the role that the SSA play and that independent voice that they provide, nor though uh, should we shy away from the fact that Sports Scotland do provide a, a good service uh, to promote a sport across uh, the country. Now, uh, sorry, who, uh, Kezia, yes. Kezia Dugdale. Uh, I thank the Minister for giving way and given it is a debate, I, I welcome uh, her response to Liz Smith and would like to continue along those lines. Can she explain in very simple terms, having just announced that she's going to spend an additional £2 million on sport, why the Scottish Sports Association is going to see a reduction of £70,000? It, it doesn't add up. Minister. Well, I'm going to uh, go on and talk about the, the funding that we have provided and the relationship that we've had from uh, SSE. But I've also heard an awful lot from members tonight about wanting an uh, been very keen for us to drive forward participation and some of that is done through uh, Sports Scotland most of that all of that is done through Sports Scotland whether that's through active skills coordination or community sports hubs and many mentioned many members mentioned um, a legacy and community sports hubs are a direct legacy uh, which are driven forward by our Sports Scotland our agency so can I continue with my uh, remarks um, it, the Scottish Government draft budget, I believe, does make absolutely clear our commitment to sport and physical activity sector in Scotland and helping to improve the health of our nation. And as part of that funding package, the Scottish Government provides significant funding to support governing bodies through our National Agency for Sport, Sport Scotland. What we don't do is that we do not provide core funding to the SSA. The Scottish Government does not provide core funding to the SSA, and for tonight's debate, that is an important point to note. In financial year 2017-18, we provided funding for the SSA to carry out short-term projects. Firstly, an important audit that focused on assessing equalities within sporting governing bodies, important in our endeavour to create opportunities for all uh, to enjoy sport. And secondly, work to highlight and celebrate the work of grassroots volunteers and coaches who provide so much opportunity for so many. And we intend to continue working uh, with the SSA on bespoke project work in, in the future in recognition of the role that they have and the work that they do. The debate this evening rightly highlights the various roles carried out by the SSA, including the administrative support which it currently provides to governing bodies. And I have truly valued the correspondence I have received from those governing bodies who describe to me the support that they get. Sports Scotland are also committed and currently provide a significant... Complete, uh, I've taken to... Uh, uh, Take intervention is a matter for you, Minister. You can have the time if you wish. OK, I'll take one from uh, Mr uh, Kelly. James Kelly. Uh, yeah. I, I thank the Minister for taking the, the, the intervention. We've, we've had five minutes and I still, we've still not had any explanation as to why this decision has been taken to take £70,000 out of the funding stream and effectively cut the legs from the Scottish Sports Association. Can you maybe at least give us an explanation of the government's thinking? Minister. What, what I've talked about tonight is the fact is that we do not deny that there is a role for the SSA or nor the right for our governing bodies to have an independent voice and that collective voice which SSA provide. Uh, but we have never given core funding to the... Uh, we don't give core funding to the SSA uh, and that is why we will continue to work with the SSA on bespoke, uh, on bespoke projects where we know that they can add value. And I think um, that... That is, that is the situation that we will continue to work with them and have you know, given project funding in, in the past. But I also want to make the point that the Sports Scotland are also committed and currently provide a significant amount of time, expertise and investment to help our governing bodies deliver on their objectives. Through the partnership managers, Sports Scotland work in close and effective partnership with governing bodies and provide advice in terms of governance and finance. And that relationship is at a senior level with the governing body, including with the chief executive and board of directors. In addition, uh, dependent on the nature of the sport, Sports Scotland have also have named members of their school and community coaching and volunteering facilities development high performance teams assigned to each sport uh, providing access to expertise and services in those areas and many have discussed and described the necessity of a um, of uh, driving forward participation and legacy and that's absolutely the priority of this government and what our agency is charged to do it is sports scotland that coordinate active skills 
and it's also them that are fundamental to the community sports hubs that are a direct legacy of the Commonwealth Games. Presiding officer, I, I again repeat, we absolutely res respect the right of our sporting governing bodies to come together under a representative body and recognise that whilst the SSA does not represent everyone in the sector, some members of the SSA uh, value that collective voice of sporting bodies role played by the SSA. Mr Kelly's motion refers to the government providing funds to other membership organisations in the voluntary sector. And there are a number of membership organisations across the third sector in Scotland who do have a funding relationship with the government, either for specific project funding or to support some of their core activity. There are also a significant number who do not. And it's also important to recognise that there are a number of other representative bodies in the sporting uh, world who... Um, or work on behalf of other elements of the system, Sporta, Vocal, Salsk, who are not funded by the Scottish Government. As I mentioned earlier, the representation uh, work carried out by the SSE has never been funded by the Government, and we believe it is for the membership to identify appropriate financial resources for the role they wish to play on their behalf. And as Minister for Public Health and Sport, I've met with number, numerous governing bodies as groups and individuals and governing bodies will, con and will continue to do so. And I do intend to meet with those who have written to me, as I always do, to listen, engage and have frank dialogue. And I'll be meet meeting with uh, Liz Smith and Alison Johnson in their roles as co-conveners of the Cross Party Group to discuss this situation and pay tribute to them for their continued interest in this. Work has been ongoing between Sports Scotland and the Government to encourage the SSA to move to a more sustainable funding model and we'll continue to work with the SSA on project work eh, as we have in the past. But I will also again eh, reiterate that I will continue to recognise the important the uh, importance of the independence, uh, independent voice to our governing bodies. And again, thank uh, James Kelly for uh, bringing forward this debate. Thank you, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.